Them man there, them man there, ain't nothing like them man there. My man, I stand up, give them man chairs. Them man there. Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching For The Culture. My name is Richard Blackwood. Now, if you look to my right, we're going to get to the man in a minute. If you look to my right, there's a young lady. <laughs> I like the word young is, 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 is in capitals right now. She, without doubt, is the reason why you see people of colour on EastEnders. Right, without doubt, she's one of the, <laughs> the first to be on EastEnders representing properly on a mainstream show. She's done so many prolific things. But the thing that's alarming to me is that she looks the same age <laughs> as she I did she. back then. I swear that was in the 90s. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Gell, ladies and gentlemen. Good. Hey. Michelle, Michelle. Thanks for having me, guys. Oh, man, listen. So Michelle's is Michelle. Wait, no, we've got to say building. Jason Badass Barrett, because I never introduced him, yeah. right? <laughs> JB Smooth, I call him. Yeah, Moomoo. <laughs> <laughs> Moomoo. <laughs> About to own it. <laughs> About to own it. <laughs> Uh, please, please. So, yes, no, um, we've got Michelle in as a guest presenter because she's yes. doing so many amazing things, both yes. in front and behind the camera mm -hmm. now, right? Mm -hmm. I am working a lot behind the camera now. Good. Writing scripts and developing shows for TV. Ah! Yay. There you go. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. And, of course, our guest today, our guest of honour today. Mm -hmm. I, I feel honoured. My, my, my... Honourable friend. My honourable friend. <laughs> <laughs> I had to make sure which one it was when you're in court. It's my learned friend in Parliament. My honourable friend. Mm. The Secretary for State. The Shadow Secretary of State. That was just a prophecy. I know, exactly. That was exactly. just a prophecy. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> soon come, soon come. Yeah. Soon come, soon come. Yeah. <laughs> the Shadow Secretary for State for Women and Equalities. The Honourable mm -hmm. Dawn Butler MP, everyone. <laughs> That's one thing I want to say I love about this show, right? It goes across the board, Facts. right? You know, because one thing that we need to recognise is that we have people from our culture doing many diverse things. It's not just one set thing. And, and you know, a lot of people watch TV and they think that we, we're only meant to aspire just to be rappers, mm. right? Or to be actors. And it's like, no, 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 we, we, you heard the title, right? <laughs> <laughs> you heard the title, right. right? And And I think it's very important for young black women Right, Definitely. to be seeing what's happening over here because mm -hmm. once again, I see Instagram, I see you out there on Instagram, I see you posing with, you know, not a lot on. <laughs> right, do you know what I mean? Put your clothes on, get your books on. <laughs> <laughs> get your learning on. Like my dad would say, learn your book. <laughs> learn your book. So, <laughs> Dawn, mm. talk to us. First of all, what is the shadow secretary for state because a lot of people think that secretary mm. basically makes cups of teas and does letters mm -hmm. oh, that's, yeah. reception. that's yeah. what they expected me to do at school we're right in it we're we're right in it. Right <laughs> i crossed my legs this <laughs> <laughs> evening <laughs> So tell us, what, 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 what is that? I mean, it's a very illustrious title. Mm. What do you do? So, I mean, essentially what I do is I hold the government to account on equality issues and what they're doing with women and equalities um, and also other things. Mm -hmm. And we also develop policies. So I develop policies for the Labour Party. So hopefully when we're in government, mm -hmm. uh, we can just go straight in and make the country fair and more equal for everybody. Because at the moment, people are struggling and they're mm -hmm. suffering. Mm -hmm. And it's because of what this government is deliberately doing to them. Mm -hmm. So our job is just to shine a light on that and say, you guys are ruining people's lives. We would do better, but also to try and change what's happening whilst it's happening. As a, um, <clears throat> as a black woman, mm. Even when I go on Twitter, mm. usually when I do, an, uh, like a, sometimes I do Sky News, sometimes I do um, the right stuff, now Jeremy Vine show or whatever. Yeah, Jeremy Vine, yeah. But generally, um, if there is an insult, there is usually an insult either to do with what's either a black person doing talking or something, or what's mm. a woman mm. having an opinion. It always tends to either be, the insult either always tends to re refer to my colour or my gender or both. Mm -hmm. um, so as an MP, I can only imagine mm. that you must get a lot of that or, or am I wrong in thinking no, that you do? No, 100% right. I mean, we get it all, don't we? So we get the stuff because we're a woman, the stuff because we're black, mm. the stuff because we've got a cheek to speak. Mm. Mm. Do you know what I mean? In public. Mm -hmm. So we get all of that. So it's all these different layers of, like, we call it intersectionality. So all these different layers of how, who we are intersect with each other. Mm. So, um, so no, I get a hell of a lot of abuse. 
Uh, but actually, I don't read it, so I don't scroll anymore. Do you know what I mean? So I post things on Twitter, and then I don't scroll. Mm. So I, I don't read it. Right, like um, selfish. Yeah, you, you just put, put it up, on, yeah, and then I'm on. gone. Yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. This is where I've been, and I'm here, and then I'm gone. Is that deliberate to kind of avoid the the kind of negative comments that can maybe get you down or? Yeah, because, I mean, it's a couple of things. One, because, um, yeah, I just can't let that enter my psyche, yeah. you know? And the second thing is because I want to respond. I want to cuss and I can't cuss. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't, so see because, so because didn't see that coming. Didn't see that coming. So I need I to avoid it. Like, I coming. need to avoid it. I want to cuss. <laughs> and yeah. so I have to avoid it. And, but the bad thing is, no, no, is that I can't. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. like, okay, I'm going to have to leave it. So, but but the, bad, the sad thing is my office go through and then they have to report anything to the police or the serious stuff gets reported. And so, and I realise it's affecting them. Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes they're really sad. I come in and they're really sad. You're all happy. Yeah, yeah, you're, like, you're not reading them. Yeah, hey, everyone. Yeah. So, this is what we're going to do today. And they're like, you're not and reading Twitter. Really, yeah, they're really, they're really sad. Woman, woman. Come in and they're all smiling. Nobody else is smiling. And it's really, it's <laughs> quite bad. It's quite bad. It is quite bad because I'm like, damn, you know. So sometimes they actually want to, so occasionally I do, you know, the odd one slips through and I do respond or I say something, you know, I like take the pin out and throw something and I throw something out there and sometimes they want to take, you know, my phone away <laughs> because, they, because they can't take all the pressure. Which we only wish they did that to Donald Trump, right? Well, well exactly. Uh, yeah. but we're going to get on to Trump. We're going to get on to Trump. Gonna get on to Trump. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so I must ask you, before we, uh, I guess we come up to date with, with your politics, mm -hmm. what made you decide to even venture down that road mm. as a young woman growing up in today's society? Yeah, so it wasn't something that I really wanted to do. Okay. So um, so I used to do a lot of stuff. I used to organise events. I used to organise events that you came to, actually. You actually performed at one of my events in Hackney. Wow. Yeah, wow. Uh, all them years ago. You and Gina Yashere, you were... Uh, oh, back you in were, the 90s. Back in the, yeah, back yeah, yeah. In the 90s. So yeah. I can't remember what the club was called now. It was... Uh, in Hackney, I can't remember. But anyway, so I used to organise lots of events for various charities, uh, raise lots of money, mm. but I started off as a computer programmer. Okay. okay. Lovely. Um, and then, uh, and only because at school, the only teacher that kind of took an interest in teaching me was the computer teacher. So, um, so I went into computers. I started off as a computer programmer. Then um, I got sexually abused for about, I don't know, the whole time I was there. So it was like, five years or whatever. Was there that was because you was very, it was a very male-dominated industry? Completely male-dominated industry. Um, I mean, back then, you know, a server would fill this room, do you know what I mean? It's not like yeah. nowadays, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, I know. So, um, and uh, I used to have a guy that used to look at my skirt every day. It was wow. just a nightmare. So I used to wear trousers for five years. So, you know, it was that kind of thing. Because what you do is you, you find ways of coping, don't mm. you? Like if you're, you don't always challenge. Because even though I challenged, nobody took it seriously. Yeah. So in the end, I had to find my way of coping. So my way of coping was to wear trousers so that when he pretended to drop his pencil on the oh floor, gosh. he couldn't look up my skirt. Wow. So, um, so I took redundancy, uh, bought myself a convertible car. So um, how, I, did, how did politics come in? Yeah. So, so we've left so, there. Yeah, so we left there. So then I um, basically raised lots of money for charity. I did lots of different events and things like that. Um, took a year out. Uh, and then my mum said, I need to start earning some money. You know them months. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, where? So yeah. <laughs> And then, um, uh, then I started working with trade unions. Okay. So I now became a civil servant and became very active in the trade unions. But and realized, can I just stop though? You say like became a civil servant as if that's an easy thing to do. Mm. A lot of people out here, when you're doing your kind of at school, mm. that's not usually something that they reference that, that a person can be, mm, to be a civil true. servant. So tell us what that entails to be a civil servant. So it's true actually, because what <laughs> actually what happened was. So um, essentially I was unemployed, right? I was doing all my stuff for charity, but I was unemployed. And I remember I got a letter saying that I needed to come in for an interview at the job centre. Mm. So I'm all dressed up in my suit and everything with my little briefcase, because an interview to me was an interview. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't realise you're going to the job centre and just rock up. <laughs> To prove, give your details, yeah. like, to prove to we'll you deserve yeah. your check. I didn't understand that. To me, I saw interviews. Like, okay, so I'm getting interviews. I'm all smartly dressed. So when That's I walked brilliant. in, That's when, brilliant. when I walked in, they thought I worked. Pounds. They actually thought I worked there because oh. I was dressed so smartly. They thought I worked there, and I was just like, "Can I come for my interview?" But you know, I didn't know it was like job seekers. Uh, <laughs> 
That's kind of what it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> gyro. So, uh, yeah. 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 So, okay. Hi, gyro. So, um, so I went in, and then uh, so then they said you need, you know, you should take a test to thing. So you had to go, and I had to do this test, and then I passed the test, and I became uh, like a manager in the employment service. Oh wow! Yeah. Amazing. Okay. See, see, wow, you, I would really? say you dress, love that. dress for the role or train for the role that you haven't R- got yet. Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. 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 And that. there it is in practice. Yeah. So can Evidence. I ask you? Okay. Uh, before, uh, as I say, I, I want to get to current, but mm. you were saying that I met you, and you said it so flippantly that you was sexually abused for five mm. years mm. in in your workplace, mm. and 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 it, what it shows was that it was such a a, a norm that you didn't even hold it in your in your being, it's like, I just got past that and now I'm here. Mm. And then you see now with the Me Too movements and things that are happening now. Mm. Um, first of all, I know it sounds like a silly question to ask, what's your view on the Me Too movements and, and should they have happened back then? But what what was the, what made it different for women back then to be able to, I guess, pretend it wasn't happening and carry on? Did it take a certain type of woman to be able to do that? Does that make sense, what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I think, I think it's interesting because well, anyway, no one listened. <laughs> so, well, yeah, so yeah, it's almost yeah, like yeah. no one's listening. Mm-hmm. So it's completely male dominated. Mm-hmm. Uh, they would spend lots of money on lots of things, but not on looking after sort of women or their views or anything like that. That's why the trade unions are so important because if yeah. you belong to a trade union, they will listen. Okay. But, you know, if, yeah. you're lo- if you're looking at industry or something like that, they're not necessarily going to listen because they're just like, what's their bottom line? Mm-hmm. You know, in general. So sorry, that's why we have to change to that. There, but I think that's a really important point because oftentimes when someone thinks about trade union, they only think about employment within the, my, my mm. pay, my wages. Mm, and it's, it's going strike because they're not paying this guy mm. right. They, you very seldom think about things like, you know, sexual abuse on the job mm-hmm. or you very seldom yeah. think about that with regards to the trade unions. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah they're important. there for your overall protection and I think that's the that's the main thing. But I think, yeah, I think women put up with a lot of uh, crap, basically, yeah. back then. And that's why you're finding, with the Me Too movement, all of that, you've got a certain generation of women who almost refuse to accept that... Do, uh, do you know what I mean? You know when you get these older women that say, oh, you know, are you going to hold it against him? That was what it was like. Right. It was never okay. Mm. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It was never okay mm. to abuse women. It was yeah. never okay to look up their skirt every time. It was never okay mm. to touch them without their permission. It was never okay. Mm-hmm. The fact that you had to put up with it doesn't mean that it was okay or it doesn't mean that you were particularly strong. It just meant that you dealt with it, but it was never okay. Mm. And it's how do we make it better? So then I want to ask you, do you believe that the men, men now are, I guess, adhering to it and, and saying, yeah, you're right, blah, blah. But do you find that men are doing that because now the spotlight's on them for doing right or do you believe it's because they want to do better? I'm hoping it's because they want to do better because <clears throat> all men have a mother. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Without a doubt. <laughs> so, uh, so <laughs> it's true. You know, so all men have a mother. And you would hope that they want to do better and they'd yeah. want a better society for everybody that they know. And so, it, you know, it's... There's there's nothing to lose from having yeah. a more respectful society. Yeah. You know when people say, "Well, why should we? Why it's political correctness gone bad?" No, it's just make it's just a decent society. Yeah, yeah, and there's yeah. nothing to lose from living in a decent society. See, now I'm going to play heaven's advocate here. Heaven's advocate <laughs> is a thing for people that watch. <laughs> he never says the devil. Devil's not allowed in this room, <laughs> right? But heaven's advocate as a so, church man, so go ahead, preach on, brother. With the political correctness gone mad, because you're right, mm. it's something that we hear constantly. People always, oh, this is PC gone mad. This is PC gone mad. But in some cases, do you not think that things have have gone too far the other way and not with, around mm. the area of things like racism mm. or sexual abuse or sexism or things like that but people must feel constrained so people that are from the so-called right well you hear about you know speakers going to university campuses mm. and people not letting them speak and you think well I want to hear your opinions even if they don't resonate with me or mm. but I do want to hear what you've got to say because I might need to give you a teaching moment mm. I might mm. need to correct you so do you feel that there is an, an area where political correctness has gone too far when we're sort of shutting down free speech? I think some people might take it too far or misunderstand, right. but, <clears throat> but you know, I don't think it's gone too far. I mean, when you talk about the universities and they're not allowing people to speak, it's the people making those decisions in the university, but other people said, you know, exactly, we want to hear people's views so we can discredit their views so that mm. they don't, so you mm. don't, you know, it doesn't go underground where all of a sudden they get a following. It's like, bring Absolutely. it out in the open mm-hmm. and let's have that discussion and debate. But some people's views, hell no, we don't want to hear their views because they have no right to be given a platform. Right. You know, why should we give... Or validation, certain, Yeah, so why should we? You know, why should we give, you know, 
certain right wing people a platform. No, you know, leave them in a corner and let them shrivel and die. <laughs> <laughs> only on this show, only on this show can we say let them shrivel up and die in yeah. another yeah. corner. Yeah. Or to the weird. <laughs> you know, like talking about political correctness, all this kind of this climate of doing the right thing for black people, for women and, and, and for for um, people who were who were not English, do do you think that that has caused? I know in America they're talking about a white backlash now. Would you now see Brexit as a white backlash? Would you kind of good, having good now question. looking back at the what's happening in America when we look back at Brexit now? Do we see that as a white backlash? Do we see it as a kind of digging in for the old England, the, the England that they liked before all of us lot got here? Yeah, but that's the thing, right? It's like, what is the old England? Like, mm. what is it? But I do understand yeah. what you're saying in regards to people saying, oh, um, you're letting too many people in the country, blah, blah, blah. But they, there was a lot of confusion. I think, it, I think it was a combination of things. I think it was pain, like the pain of austerity. People were feeling a lot of pain. And mm. when you feel a lot of pain, you blame somebody. Absolutely. Yeah. And you normally blame somebody that don't look like you because mm. you don't want to have that association. So there was a lot of pain. Mm. Um, and then, you know, there's a lot of confusion because actually the people that they're saying coming into the country actually are, are white skinned. Mm. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so uh, so there, was a lot of there was a lot of confusion around that. So I think that vote was the first time people had to vote uh, after they'd been through a lot of pain for it, you know, for seven years. But six people years. voted who've never ever Absolutely. voted before mm. yeah. in their entire lives mm. made that vote for Brexit. And a lot mm. of the time, the, uh, uh, the, the overwhelming thing was immigration control. Mm -hmm. It was control on our borders. Mm -hmm. It was that seemed to be sort of the the the. The general thread of when you ask people, you know, why did you vote leave? Mm -hmm. That was the main thing. I found, I mean, too, I found the, the working thing. class a lot was to do with immigration, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I found the kind of the gent gentrified people it was about sovereignty. Mm -hmm. So there were like definitely two camps who wanted two completely different things, but then would and are two. I mean, would never ever meet on the street or have dinner mm -hmm. together, mm -hmm. but then they had this view of the England that they wanted that kind of matched on the Brexit. It makes Brexit. no sense though, does it? Because like, uh, the point is this, is like sovereignty, so sovereignty is what? Our parliament, mm -hmm. our parliament where the prime minister is trying to change all the laws so that they make all the decisions yeah, in number votes. 10 behind yeah. closed doors where nobody will have a say yeah. rather than the EU and it does need reforming mm -hmm. absolutely where the EU where <clears throat> you've got 28 countries sitting around yeah. the table saying what should our human rights be mm. what sort of what things should be in our food mm. you know how should our medicines be made mm. you know all of that's made by cooperation in public where people can see it rather than behind closed doors mm. so we had sovereignty we can we make our own laws and in fact, the, the thing is, when you look at it, um, like workers' rights, we're talking about trade unions and workers' rights, mm -hmm. right? Lots of our rights came from the EU, some of them. So, for instance, working 48 hours a week. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. So because, well, you know, people like working 60, 70 hours till they drop. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden a new law came in to say you can work 48 hours a week and that's it. Mm -hmm. You need to go home, get some sleep, spend some yeah. time with your family. That came from the EU. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when we leave the EU, that will no longer exist. Exactly. So people can go back to working 70 hours a week, they'll start getting exploited again. And we're sovereign now. So we could have said, this government could have said, we're gonna put this on our statute books to say that people should only work 48 hours a week, but they refuse to do it. Well, that's okay, you just hit my point. So is that the reason why I guess this was even suggested? Because you, you see, okay, people get hit at different levels. So the working class, I find it brought, brought out the prejudice that they always felt, right? Like, yeah, it's about time you guys leave. And it's like, that's, <laughs> that's technically what this is. It's not really about that. Like, you've been watching too much Trump, mm. right? Do you know what I mean? And you're getting this Americanization of, mm. like, Trump saying, let's keep, the like, you know, he's saying, let's keep the Mexicans out, build the wall. And you think, yeah, Brexit's that. And it's like, no, it has, it's not that at all, mm. right? But then, like you say, now that, because pension age has gone up, hasn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, you know. <coughs> so a pension yes. before was what age? Um, 65. Uh, six, 60 65. 65. Right, and now it's... Now you, now there's no pension age. There you've got that. Now you can work, now, you, now you're like entitled to work forever. But Ever. you can draw you see, what, until you, you die. But you can it's draw from 70, what's the age you can draw from now? So I think for women you can draw 
a pension from late 65, 60s. isn't it now? Or is it I 69? Pretty... Well, it depends on the job. Okay. Yeah. So it depends on the job. Um, I, so it depends on the job. But yeah, from 65, you can say, like, I want to retire. But this is also why what they decided to do, what the government decided to do, and I'm not a pensions expert, and that's not um, my field, mm. but what the government decided to do was to say, you can take your pension mm. at any time. Right. So they changed. So, so you know you would retire and you get your pension and you live and you mm. and you travel around to Cornwall and Wales <laughs> and you have a good time. They said, no, you can take your pension at any time. We were like, whoa, hang on a minute. You want people to continue working yeah, and draw on their the pension pension. when they're struggling exactly. yeah. and then there'll be no money left and then they're going to be living in poverty. And, then, and we're saying, but hang on. And then you're asking all these people who are in their 60s. To, to invest their own pension mm. that the government's given you because they're not going to be enough, enough to live on. Mm. And what's happened? Holy people have been scammed. Yeah. And, and they're and left with point. nothing. And that's my yeah, point, that's which means that you've got a workforce that has to continue to work. Yeah. right? And I think that it sounds to me like that's what the, the, the bigger thing was. Because remember, we're in the red, mm. right? Do you know what I mean? And it's like, and you, you give people the right to feel like it's all a scam, but like, yeah, you can take your pension when you like. And it's like, oh, actually. And it's like, but you're not thinking down the road that, hold on a minute, when that dries up, Mm -hmm. and you're still having to live, mm -hmm. that means that you're going to have to work still. And now you're at the age where maybe it's not so, you're not so Ooh, agile. It's right? actually cruel. It's a cruel policy. It's like a really cruel, and it's a cruel policy. It's a cruel yeah. government. It's a I cruel mean, policy. Look, I mean, I, I voted Remain, and, and probably all of us here did. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, and, and, I'm, and I'm for a second referendum, and I know there is a... It's a I can't believe I'm on here talking about Brexit. It's <laughs> <laughs> No, no, you know what? Blame Michelle, blame Michelle. Blame Michelle, blame Michelle. We can get to the fun in a bit. I'm going to fight, but I'm worried. And a lot of black people wanted to vote Brexit. A lot of black people felt that Eastern Europeans were prejudiced against them. And this was a moment also for them to... To, to vote you, Brexit. Look, I know look, a lot look, of black look, people who did that. But, that. but this is the thing. I, I do know a lot of black people who did that. But we have been conditioned to think like, like you've earned your place, mm. now these people can't come yeah, over here. So up. we're in our Jamaican accident, they're not supposed to come how over here. And you go, yeah, I mean, how sad is that? That's what's happening. I mean, it was just, it was so shocking. And that's the thing with this blame game. When you look at something to blame, that is like from Trump's playbook, where, you know, he's blaming, pitching people against each other, where what we're supposed to do is just everybody kind of finding a way to to live together and to mm. you know to build the country because you need people are getting older working out but also you need younger people to come in and to work yeah you know you need people so far we've got like a hundred thousand vacancies in the nhs or or more mm. we need people to come and work 100%. you know we haven't got the doctors mm. you know my mum was waiting in the corridor in the hospital the other day mm. do you know what I mean? it's like mm. this country is falling apart mm. yeah. uh, and it's not because of immigration or migration mm. or expatriates. Mm. It's not because of that. Because it's okay when people want to go to Spain, mm. but even they're being, they're, they're in mm. trouble now. Asking, yeah. Yeah. They're right. in trouble. Right. You know, lots of people yeah. go and retire in Spain <laughs> and they don't learn to speak Spanish. Yeah, no, no. They go to Spain <laughs> in the You are oh, foreigner. Me then... Leo, English man. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky I'm it. So, it's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's okay, that? yeah. It's, it's, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of situations and circumstances that people really haven't fully considered, which I understand. I mean, it was a, it was a really simplified question, which yeah, it was, was wrong. Yeah, it, it was yes or no. It was yeah, so, yes so, or no. So therefore, that, I mean, that's yes. why I and do the think you do it. deserve a vote on what your actual terms are. So something, you voted on a promise yeah. originally, uh -huh. and now you're going to vote on reality. Right. That, that's how I see it. Okay, so, and, all right, so, so give me the you, real terms now and give me my, my opportunity. And, and then maybe Dawn can share that. She's the expert. But mm. my take on it is Brexit. this. I'm living in a house with a group of people. Let's just call them my family. Mm. Okay. Yeah, and we've been here for 40 odd years. Mm -hmm. And they say, you know what? We, we want to leave. Mm. Half of us want to leave. Half of us want to stay. It ends mm. up being 49, 51. Mm. Mm. So okay. we're going to leave. Mm. So now we need to discuss how we're going to leave. Yeah. And I say, well, we can go on a plane, we can go on a train, we can mm. go on a bus, mm. we can go on a boat. Mm. Okay. So how are we going to do it? Well, let's say we go on a boat. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'll get motion sickness. Yeah. I'll get seasickness. Mm. I'm up for the plane. Oh, no, no, I don't do yeah. flying. Yeah. I don't do flying. And so we didn't ever discuss, because on the paper, we just said, well, we want to leave the house. Yeah. We didn't ever discuss how we want to leave, yeah, the yeah, mode yeah, of yeah. transportation. And now everyone's saying... And also how we're affected once you do once, leave. Yeah. Well, yeah, we didn't talk about that either. So yeah. it's almost like, well, hang on a minute, because if we've got to get on a boat to leave, I'd actually prefer to stay. I want to leave, mm. but 
if that's the mode of transport that's left for me, then I'll have to stay. The, so, so this is why I'm saying, that, shouldn't Jason, it be a situation? Because you've actually made someone else decide how you're going to leave. It's not even you guys deciding it now. You voted to leave, and then now Theresa May and her and her coven. I didn't say. Are like, are like you know deciding how we're going to leave and saying, well, that's it. Because you said you want to leave, I, I get to decide how you leave, and that's your lot. But that's what you did when you when people voted. But I mean, there's a great guy. I think his name's Femi mm. uh, on Twitter. I mean, he's like a Brexit expert. You should get him on. He's really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I get the house analogy. I mean, I I in the beginning I was saying, well, I felt that the vote was, um, do you want to buy a house? Mm. And you're saying, and the vote was. You know, do you want to buy a house and we'll buy you a nice, big, shiny house and, you know, it'll be really nice and there'll be £350 million inside yeah. it for you when you go in. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, but you have to leave this house mm. uh, where you are, but I'll just buy you this nice, shiny house. And some people thought, well, OK, I'll, I'll go with this new mm. shiny house. Mm. But they didn't tell you where the house was, what yeah. the house would look like if yeah. there'd really be £350 million. Mm. Passing. But people took, you know, a leap of faith. Yeah. And do I think there should be a, a second referendum? No. Mm. No, I don't. The first one was mm. bad enough. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but I do think, I do think there should be a people's vote, but I think the people's vote should be a general election. Mm -hmm. wow. Because what will happen at a general election is everybody will set their stall out. Mm -hmm. So they will say, this is what we will do, because there's more than Brexit that's happening. So yeah. this is what will happen around Brexit. And this is the team, you know, this is our team that will go in and negotiate for you. Mm -hmm. This is what will happen around Brexit. Mm -hmm. This is what will happen around your working conditions. Mm -hmm. This is what will happen around domestic violence and women. Mm -hmm. This is what will happen around the justice system. So each of those things, people will get to vote on a whole package to the, in the country rather than just Brexit, which is still very, you know, it's still very um, pliable. It's still very mm. unstable in terms of what it actually means. Yeah. And I, do you and know, I think, know what I mean? I Even with the deal, it that doesn't, you know. As we're going along now, yeah. I, think, I think people are only, people voted and then said, okay, what does it mean now? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. essentially that's, what we're... Do you know the yeah. most yeah, Google, the next yeah. day, yeah. the next day, top of the Google search list, what is the EU? Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that, that, that was, was number one. one. People don't know. What is, what is the EU? I want to leave the EU. Yep. What, what is, is the EU? EU? <laughs> <laughs> was we in it? No one was Euro. Yeah. Exactly. But we've been in the EU for 40 odd years. Thank you. Exactly. And so you've got to undo 40 years in two years. And there's like 40 organisations in the EU you that look at as I say you know what's in our food mm. you know what's what's in the medicines that we mm. take uh, whether you have this uh, cross-country working in terms of crime mm. you know there's like 40 organizations that look at all these different things that we pay for as part of the EU so we pay our share a 28th of mm. whatever it takes for people to to test our furniture to yeah. make sure it doesn't mm. you know burst into flames mm -hmm. you know if mm -hmm. you remember those days when you used to have furniture that used to burst into flames absolutely so yeah, we pay adverts, we yeah. pay a yeah. percentage of that we pay tw a 28th of the cost of providing that service when when we leave the EU, you have to pay your 100%. whole bit. You're not part of that 28. You're not part of that. If you want access to that, you're going to have to pay a whole heap of money. Yeah, you are. So yeah, you're not yeah. going to save money. Yeah, yeah, you're not yeah, going to have yeah. a net savings. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. going to have to pay a lot of money just yeah. to keep the standards that we have. Unless you want to reduce the standards. If you reduce the standards, you reduce your costs. Mm. Can I ask you something? I can't believe you're making me talk about the EU. Sorry. I know, I know. We're going to move on. Michelle, we are going to move on. Blame Michelle, blame Michelle. Sorry. But just before we move on, I just want to ask, did... A David Cameron ever exist? Oh, because he's gone missing. <laughs> no, but the thing he's is, and it's he's the way chilling. he did it. He's David, no, it's no, the way he's David, no, no, you, oh he's my god, gangster. Gangster. Is, he, he is, is, literally is, came out and there went. That guy's gangster. So guys, uh, <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> out. He went. See you guys there. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, my <laughs> job. <laughs> no, I said, uh, but I'm not thinking history. No, no, but don't no, forget, no. he said, I'm gonna see it through. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's me or remain, I'm gonna see it through. The man's gone missing. No, he said, I'll see it through to this day. Him and George Osborne. Him and George Osborne. They are like mythological beasts. Yeah, they are. Oh, they yeah, like, did chilling. they even exist? Yeah. Did we see them? You question your own eyes. That they have moonwalked out the place. I know, I know. It was like, I stay silent. We're lost. Like, 
Hit it. Do, do, yeah. do, 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 what yeah. they will do to cling on to power. It's like, we need to cling on to power, so therefore we need to out UKIP, UKIP. Okay, then they want to be okay, we're going to have it. Even Nigel Farage wasn't expecting it. No. What? I just, okay, you see, you put me on to Nigel yeah, Farage because I remember it. he couldn't believe that all of a sudden people were going, you know what, you might just win. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? Yeah. You know that Donald Trump, you know, because he said what he said, you might just be in the running. And all of a sudden people are trying to interview him. He couldn't believe that he's being interviewed. <laughs> I swear by Almighty God that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, her heirs and successors, according to law, so help me God. Can you imagine now, in 2018, feeling surplus to requirements, after giving this country the best years of their lives, they've been told that they need to go back, or they are illegal, or uh, they're no longer wanted? When the sharpest words want to cut me down, I'm going to send a flood, going to drown them out. I am brave, I am bruised, I am who I'm meant to be, this is me. Look out, because here I come, and I'm marching on to the beat I drum. I'm not scared to be seen, I make no apologies, this is me. <laughs> So how do you, how do you, what motivates you then? And that's what I'm trying to say. Like what, what, what would motivate you? And then what would you say to people that yeah. are aspiring to be like yourself? So, I mean, what motivates me is, um, is the fact that sometimes you can get through. Yes. So, okay. the, so the thing is sometimes you can get through and you can make a difference. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, and the fact is that I hope that we will be in government soon and then like we are just going to mash this thing up and yeah, it's just yeah, going to yeah. everything, you know, not, not everything, it's not going to be easy, mm. but I mean, we have the vision mm. to make the country a better place. So you kind of hold on to that. It's like, come on, let's keep doing this. But also the more people that we bring on board to so the more people who are getting involved and social media helps with that, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, the more people, it's good and it's bad. So, you know, the more people can get involved, the more voices that can be heard, you know, the way that the wind rush um, scandal has blown up because lots of people are able to get involved now and sort of tell their story quite directly mm -hmm. so they can't be blocked off at the first hurdle do you know what I mean so they you know whereas sometimes you, you somebody can put that barrier in the way you know mm -hmm. there's times that we can bring those barriers down and I think also um, it's like us all working together so I think like there's lots of like even this show I think like there's lots of stars that have been aligned where we have to make an effort to elevate each other. Yeah. Yeah. We have to make an effort to say, you know, um, like when you was doing a show, I can't remember, you was doing a show, it was like, okay, come on, let's all That's tweet right. about it. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Let's all say it's great. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Let's it, do you know, it. It's like, let's all do it. Let's all elevate each other. Mm. Because if we don't do that, you know, some there's so much negativity that's knocking us yes. down. We need to be that flood of positivity and I we agree. need to help each other out. I agree. And that, that I think the stars are aligned to helping that to happen. So what, so would you say there's a big difference between the reasons you wanted to be an MP to the reality of the job? So have, yeah. has that now changed? Yeah. So, um, so if I'm honest, I didn't really ever want to be an MP. <laughs> so how did it happen? <laughs> so um, <laughs> it happened because, and you know, I do fall into that category of being asked where, because mm. um, I was a trade union official mm. and uh, there was a job, there was a, an MP that resigned. Mm. And so all the men couldn't go for that job because an all women shortlist. And they were like, we want a trade unionist. Let's get Dawn. And I was like, no, I'm all right. Mm. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> It's okay, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. It's like the you know Parliament doesn't look like me. Mm. You know, no one sounds like me. No one's mm. got my background. Mm. You know, a working class girl from East London. You know, this mm. it wasn't really the, something that I wanted to do. And then in the end, I kind of, after being asked about five times, I kind of spoke to my family. So like, should I do this? Then the I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a go. Mm -hmm. And so I did it. I didn't win, um, but it was okay. I learnt lessons from that, and I and I also learnt that. Um, oh, I could do this. I could do it my way. I don't have to do it the way that everybody else is yeah. doing it. I can do it my way. Um, and then 
uh, and then I stood again. Mm -hmm. uh, but this time I was ready for it. You know, like before I wasn't ready, but this time I was ready. And I stood um, in Newham and I stood again. And, uh, but people were like, you'll never, you'll never do it. You'll never win. Uh, because they had their favourite, mm. and so, um, you know, and some people were like, who, who does she think she is? And I decided I was going to do it, so I wasn't going to listen to them because I'd already decided, yes. one of them ones, you know when you've already decided, so I already decided. So I ran my campaign from my bedroom, slowly people started to come and help, but you know, I was not the favourite, you know what I mean? Uh, so I didn't win that ever, but, uh, but I lost it by four votes. Wow. Okay. And there was a football, there was a big match on, some big football match on, and right. some people went to watch the match. Yeah. Instead of voting. Instead like of it. coming Priorities. to vote. Priorities. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it was yeah, just like, and they were like, oh, because we thought you'd, we thought it'd be we fine, you'd fine. Mm. So, um, so that was that. And then I thought, oh God, this is it, it's too hard. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm knackered. Mm. I'm going to Jamaica for a holiday. Mm -hmm. And then Paul Boateng decided to, to be the ambassador. Mm. Uh, yes. And so, um, other people who were not on board was like, oh, Dawn, that's, that's definitely, you've got to go for it. And then I thought about it, and but I was still kind of in campaign mode because it happens again. And then I went for it, and then, um, and then I won. But I wasn't the favourite again. Okay. So I've never, ever been the favourite yeah. to be the MP. There was a, it was um, Tony Blair's uh, uh, political advisor who they had basically said that seats for him. Mm. Right. And so everything, all the resources, resources went to him. But... All I did was work. Yeah. All I did was work. I knocked on doors like yeah. Yeah. until ten o'clock at night. No, no, they to told no, because I'm from, from Brent, my family, yeah. so they yeah. they remember that that yeah. campaign. Yeah. A lot of people backing you. Yeah. And well, knocking doors and well, as young, my mum was very politically active. So I used to actually drop leaflets for Paul Boateng. Oh, wow. cool. Yeah, wow. yeah he still yeah. remembers me, Michelle. Will you remember uh, him and Janet? They still remember kind of, you. Kind of nice. up because we've, we've had a, we've, we've talked about a lot, but I, I I really do think that it's important. I, I personally like to be politically engaged, but mm. there's a lot that we, I think it's interesting you said, you know, oh, it doesn't look like me. And, and we kind of feel shut out of that world <laughs> it, and it can be quite <clears throat> intimidating. What would your advice be to, you know, mm. a, in particular, a young black woman that's mm. thinking about a, a young black girl that's kind of thinking careers choice mm. and so on and so forth about mm. going into politics and in, into parliament in particular? So I think you have to understand like the journey is not going to be easy for some. Yeah, of course, an easy journey. Some, you know, actors just make it just like that. And, yeah, you know, yeah. So some it's easy, but the majority of people, especially if you're black, um, it's not easy. So I think it's to understand that the journey isn't going to be easy. So if you think it's like just going for a job interview and it's going to be OK, and you're going to be recognised for your skills and your abilities and it's a level playing field, it isn't. Yeah. So my advice would be to understand that the journey is not going to be easy. Um, and there's a lot of up and downs and there's a lot of the heartache and heartbreak. Um, but I would say that you need to um, be determined, mm -hmm. surround yourself with uh, critical friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. So people who would criticise you, but you know they have your best interest at heart. Constructive. Yeah. 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 So yeah. they would, you know, so if yeah. they say, you know, that, that, that. Yeah. yeah, constructive criticism always. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because, but, but it comes from a good place. Yeah. Then you know that's good. You know, and that, that way you, you let less of the negativity in because mm -hmm. you've got that mm -hmm. critical friend, but they're your friends. And, um, and I would say also surround yourself with people who are uh, different from you and more intelligent than you and have a different outlook mm -hmm. than you. Mm -hmm. Because then you expand your, your mind and your, your journey and your thought processes. And how can people get hold of you? I know you do Twitter, but yeah. what, what, are you on Instagram? But I won't read it, no, really. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't even lying. She ain't even lying. <laughs> Send her a DM and see what happens. I don't know. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, just try it. Just try it out there. You never know. Someone in the office might, might read it. <laughs> but are you on Instagram? Uh, you yes, are. I am. Okay, uh, what is it? Is that I follow her. It is a Dawn Butler Brent. So Dawn Butler Brent is my Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Okay. Um, but the but I like I don't do casework or anything like that online. So what you have to do is email me. Okay. So just email me uh, Dawn Butler MP Office or one word at Parliament.uk, and uh, and email me. But. Um, but also be mindful that I get about 200 emails a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, it's, it's a crazy life. And can I ask, it might sound like a silly question, but what is it that you want to be most known and remembered for? 
Like what, what, I always say like, what was the yeah. catalyst? What is the thing that's made you, may not be the catalyst, but what's the thing that's made you like, it's like, this is what I want to represent. Yeah, so I, I suppose, um, I suppose, uh, historically, so I, I suppose I was the first um, black woman to ever be a minister uh, in this country. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of great to have that sort of as an accolade. So you know what, I was the first, I was the first black African Caribbean to stand at that dispatch box and, and talk on behalf of the government. So that's kind of something that I like to be mm. remembered for. But, um, but I suppose like at this moment in time and where we are as a party, I'm really enjoying our policies and the direction of travel where we're going. And I think we could really change the country for the better. And I'd love to just see the kind of government that we want. I mean, I'm, um, you know, I'm just, it's, it's like, you know, we're going on a hair journey. <laughs> I know this is like a political journey. I'm just, yeah, I just want to see, I don't think I, what I'm going to be remembered for, I've accomplished yet. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Still That's where I was trying to, to get to. It took me a while to yeah. get there. Still I was thinking come. it through in my it. head. Do you know what I mean? Come. But yeah, yeah I don't think, I, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. The yeah. best is yet to come. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. As I always say, mm -hmm. stolen from Trevor Nelson in his legendary voice, Doom Butler. For the culture, salutes. Oh, salutes! You. Salute, salute. <laughs> so good to have you. Pleasure. Yeah, mate. God Pleasure. bless you. Dawn Butler, Thank everyone. You. Inspiration. For culture, I'll see you again very soon. <laughs> Deuces. <laughs>